Hello. Hi, everyone. Wait for a few of you to join. Hello, hello, hi, hi. Oh, Larry's there, hi Larry, Kathleen, hi. Hey Matt, I'm so happy you guys are joining. Happy Thursday, It's you're early. I love prompt people. Michael Obama, of course, you're early. Oh, now it's five o'clock. Hi everyone. <laughs> I'm so happy you're all joining. We're just gonna wait. A couple of minutes while people catch up. Um, happy Thursday. Welcome back to Get Sauced. And I'm trying to look. It's week six. Six weeks. Um, while we're waiting, I'm going to, I will tell you tonight I'm doing a uh, uh, Pinot Grigio is my, I think you can read this the right way, but it's a Santa Cristina Pinot Grigio. Hey, Mike. And I'm gonna like do wine because this is not my first event. I have something later. Um, welcome on, welcome on. Um, and so, uh, it's next to normal week. Yay! Next to normal week. Because it's next to normal week, and we have been so busy at the theater, there is nothing cooking on my stove. However, I have something that I'm making that I'm going to wait uh, to tell, tell you about till my guest comes on. Um, for those of you who got to see the conversation with Tom Kitt Tuesday night, uh, what an honor. It was amazing. You can watch it. Uh, so you can still stream the link uh, through us. Um, last night, John Cardoza, who plays Gabe in Next to Normal, did a beautiful living room concert. It technically like fell apart seconds before we were going to start and it ended up because he's amazing being this spontaneous, joyous, wonderful event last night. Loved it. And tonight I have Get Sauced with You Know Who. I'm not going to say her name yet. Who's here? One of my BFFs and an amazing artist. And tonight at 7.30, for those who are interested, we're doing a, a conversation creating or actually designing next to normal. It's a conversation with the designers, which should be really interesting. Tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, cast reunion. We have so many people signed up. I hope we don't go over our cap. Cast reunion next to normal tomorrow night, 7.30. So... Uh, tonight's guest is a, I'm going to, I have to read so I don't mess this up. Tony nominee for the role of mother in the 2009 Broadway revival of Ragtime. She also appeared on Broadway in Chaplin where she received a Drama Desk nomination. She created the role of Emma in Jekyll and Hyde in 1997. And her, you can see her on TV and film in Law and Order, SUV, The Good Fight, Sound of Music Live, one of my favorite shows. She's been a symphony guest soloist with over 100 orchestras worldwide, which we'll talk about. She has a past and she's recorded five CDs and she she is in, she was appearing in uh, Dear Evan Hansen right up to the, when, when we all paused. And of course, now I have to find her. Of course, she was the wonderful, oh, I did something. You're seeing my other house. Hold on. I'm so, wait, here comes Christiane. But I have to get her on. Um, I don't know what I did. This is my, you're looking at my living room, so I hope you're enjoying it. Um, let me see. Ah, I found it. I'm getting better at my technical mishaps. But anyway, let me get back. I pressed the wrong button. Um, let's see, you guys. I can't believe I did this drum roll. And now I'm trying to find her. So I love this. Is We're going with it. Okay, here she is. Oh, my God. A big... Technical mishap. Here's gonna come on, Christiane. No, I made it. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Almost did it because of me, and they got to see my ring light and my my dining room. But you're all set. Um, <laughs> thank God it's not too messy. Hi. Welcome, amazing, gorgeous person. How are you? I'm good. 
How are, How you, are good? you? I'm really I'm good. Great. You don't have anything on the stove. Nothing on the stove, but in your I was water. wanting to talk. I was wanting to talk um, on cooking. <laughs> you no, know, I don't think my headsets are on, but I'm just going to take them off. In okay. my honor, in your honor, I and this is not my idea. This is our associate director's idea. Okay. I may I am making bologna sandwiches. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm thinking of you, and for those of you who are like, what the F is going on? No, um, they know. They've um, seen Next in, to Normal. In Next to Normal, in the first scene, you're making bologna sandwiches on the floor, and on the amazing trailer in Eric's kitchen, Yes, you're, you're actually making bologna sandwiches. Gorgeous but, kitchen. So I'm probably going to eat one afterwards, but okay. we'll <laughs> Um, and, and if you need a drink, or I, I wish I could hand you, cheers. Cheers. Welcome. Thank you. So listen, mm -hmm. where are you and what's going on before we start? I am in my home, actually. Let's see if you can recognize where I am. Um, You're in your beautiful house in New Jersey. Does this look familiar if I sit oh like this and make a face going... It's the kitchen. It's from the, the kitchen poster. from the poster. <laughs> you guys came. You got. It is amazing. You guys made a trip all the I, way down from Hartford. We all you got brought, in our cars. You got in the car, and we did. We did a photo session in my kitchen. Was that the first time that the cast gathered as a whole? Because we uh, were all. The, I mean, all the was, family gathered. It the family the gathered. Time. Yeah, that was with uh, uh, David, David and I and John. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we all sat around the, the kitchen island with the with the with the cake. And then you left the cake. <laughs> for us to eat. Did you eat it? <laughs> oh, we it took a while. But yeah, we ate it. I remember that um, that well, we knew you and I knew each other at the time. Mm -hmm. but We hadn't been I hadn't been to your house. Your house is so beautiful. And Thank so you. here's what I remember. It's so warm and in like all the, the right color. ways, <laughs> lived in and Fair. cozy. And who's there at that house with you? Because you have a bit of a showbiz family too. I have my husband who is upstairs right now, Jamie Laverdier, and my, uh, our daughter, my daughter, our daughter. Where you, you'll, I think they're gonna come and say hi later. Um, you'll see she's the, a yeah. complete mix of the two of us. But, um, her name is Rihanna and she's upstairs right now. Trying not to, I think and she's I, trying to do her hair or something. I want to ask when we really, really met, but the first time I ever laid eyes on you was at in St. Louis when Jamie and I were doing Sunday in the Park with George. Yes, and, and I came I out to visit him. A little kid, which is Rihanna at the time, she was so small. But I remember this woman with like a baseball cap on at the back of the theater. Mm -hmm. I had no idea who you were. That's Christian. That's Christian. Why is she That's in? Christian. Why is that person here? And I the cast was a flutter because oh, you were there. Well, that was a beautiful production. That I mean, uh, well, we 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 have a, a a fondness for St. Louis and that theater. We do um, that. Well, we'll talk about that too in a yeah. minute. But that's my first show with Jamie. Jamie and I also did Oliver very recently. Just at recently. Speed musicals. So. Yeah, which we got um, to see, and that was also wonderful. Talented, handsome hubby. He's um, a good but, guy. But what's your recollection of the first time we met, which is really related to St. Louis and uh, Follies? Um, right? I, yes, I think so. I mean, we, we, we met in during tech, I think, at out in St. Louis, and we had a, oh hi, hello, hello, and then I got a <laughs> phone call when you when you were doing a production of Follies out there, and so then I I was said he he would like to meet with you and just have a chit chat, and I was like oh okay, and so for we, the role of Sally, Sally, and um, so I met you in a, a small rehearsal studios, I think. It was, a, it was the, actually their filming room at Pat yeah. McCorkle's office. That was Shout it. Shout out to it. Pat McCorkle, cast the show. And she sat us down at this, I think it feels like a school desk, but I'm sure it wasn't, this little table. But we just with, sat and kibitzed. And we just sat, like, sat and kibitzed. And just chatted. And, and it, I felt an immediate kinship with you, and, which was so lovely because uh, my manager, Matthew Sullivan, has had, has and had been 
uh, a fan of your work for a long time. So when we got the call to meet you, he was like, yeah, you must go and meet with this man. Absolutely. So I was like, and with okay. that, you know, me and my, and my, you know, what, what energy I put into casting. Well, that's the thing I was going to say, that's your thing. You want to make sure that you have the right people in the room. Um, and, and, and casting has been very important to you. Um, the dynamic and, the, and seeing where they're coming from and, you know, who's going to bounce ideas are, are the ideas that you want to bounce off are going to bounce off them and how it's going to play. And, you you create an incredible room so yeah i oh, understand you. why you wanted to do that because we it's didn't always really know like each other. about i mean there's no i mean it's like i just i just a wanted you to meet me because i take these relationships very personally you know and ours ended up being the whole cast like i don't well think you had worked knows with there. you had, had worked with we adam had heller a group before text, a group text for next to yes. normal for over three years. Still still going back and forth. I, rem I mean, I remember um, when we started the Follies rehearsal, you had worked with Adam Heller, who played my buddy, a number of times. And so you, you know, once you get that, uh, that simpatico kind of thing with your actors, you, you like to work with them again. I don't know, he might be on here. I, I think I saw his name pass by, but Adam played Buddy, Emily Skinner played Phyllis, yeah. Bradley Dean, Bradley. Yeah, and so he just was... he just contacted me to have um, do some sort of corporate thing. So thank you, Bradley, because there's no nothing happening for you know, employment these days. So I was like, and, oh, thank you. And Bradley and Adam uh, and I go, you know, way back, uh, yeah. multiple shows, and then the two ladies. But I remember being in the bar with you well, and, and Emily. And, and, and but Nan Nancy Opal. Nancy Opal. Oh my God. I, I mean, so that cast, that cast so many was wonderful. incredible. Oh my God. What a and group. Adam, if you're out there, say hello. I think I saw him. I don't see him now, though. But um, I don't know my glasses. But I want to talk I about. See. I went out of order because I want to get to ragtime. But I'm gonna. Okay. Start. But yep. but I want to talk about Follies because Follies is never done. It was the 75th anniversary mm -hmm. of um of. Of the of the Repertory Theater of St. Louis, they put a lot of resources behind it. I they mean, sure did. It Those is, costumes for an actor, I guess, for a director, it's a bucket show. I had this dream cast, and that was our first dance together. And you were um, an amazing Sally. Oh, I learned you. so much. Most people don't know that you started as. Uh, well, did you start as an opera singer or? No, my an mother opera? was an opera singer. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I grew up hearing it, um, but uh, the, it's in, it was in the genes. And I learned a lot through osmosis by, by hearing her. And um, so I, I eventually, once I got into my 20s, uh, developed, finally was able to sing above the staff in a manner that wasn't embarrassing and just <laughs> kept working on it. Um, because it's a it's a process and eventually felt like I had a, a real control of that that facility which was exciting and um really cool to be able to do different shows that's just one of the reasons ragtime was so fun because she kind of goes the whole gamut but Sally yeah. depending on the keys which you guys were very very generous in um I have that reputation my own <laughs> keys so that well, made me happy just because you said that I believe because I, you know, I believe that the original composers, orchestrators, you know, would adjust keys for the artists that were originating those roles. Yeah. Some, some people feel like that know that the, that the composer wants them in those keys. But I mostly found it serves everyone to not feel an actor struggle when if you, you know, sometimes you decide not to do it if it harms the song, if it's the wrong key. But mm -hmm. don't you think, isn't it great as an artist to know that my absolutely like well, for me. Tom Kit talked about that in your chat with him that th th <gasps> he had written a song. Adam Heller. Adam, hi. All right, finish that uh, thought, then I'm um, gonna pop but, you off. He's gonna, I wanna see if he wants to come on and oh, chat fantastic. about you for a minute. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he, but he was saying that um, he had written he had written uh, some of the songs, and then when Alice joined the you know the pros the um, 
the, the project that they realized it, it needed, she wanted it to be lower because every voice has where their money notes are. And, and, and so it's once people start realizing that, that it's not, oh, it's too high, it's too low, or you just need to put it where the voice sits and then they can hit, they can sing it the way it needs to be sung. It's just sort of where, where the voice well, sits. Your so, yeah. range, I don't know where it begins and where it ends because <laughs> you blew my mind. We're going to get back to that. But okay. I'm going to pop you off for a second to okay. get Adam on because maybe he has some juice about you. We're going to find oh, out. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Let's see if I don't mess this up now. Let's see. Let's see. I got to get better at finding people. Uh, but anyway. Christiane and I go way back now. Oh, Beth Level's on. There he is. Oh, we'll talk about that. Uh, come on. Oh, no. Why won't he, why won't my button push? Adam, my button won't push. I'm going back up. I'm not giving up yet because I was told never to panic. Um, Adam, if you find a way to ask to come in, I'll do it. Oh, I see you, but, oh my God, it will be so cool. This, hey, Catherine Boswell's on. She was in Follies. This is so cool. All right. Oh, the cellist from Celeste is on. Um, Beth, hey, can I ask you to come on, Beth? Are you near Adam? I'm going to do it. I'm going to try and do it. Maybe that's the problem because he's unable to join. I'm using Beth's, I'm using Beth's face. Time. Oh my God. I mean, Instagram. Let's see. Let's see if she's going to use it. Maybe she's not at home. You know, Adam and Beth are a couple who live, who like live together, of course, because they're going to get married. Um, but maybe I totally screwed up. Oh, Adam, I wanted you to come in so badly. My team. Uh, is she coming? I'm going to have to let it go. Let's see. Hi, Catherine. Catherine was young Phyllis in Follies, Catherine Boswell. All right. Well, I guess she's not with Adam. Uh, oh, wait, view. Here we go. Let me try this. You guys, your patience. I don't know. John Cardoz is watching. I'm feeling your pain right now. And I don't know what's going on, but I am sending out a message to uh, answer your request, and then I'm going to let it go. And Adam will come on another time. Um, oh, here they come. Here they come. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. What did I do? Okay, you kids, we have to have double cocktails later. Ladies and gentlemen, we not only get the amazing Adam Heller, who played Buddy in Follies, and we've done so many shows, but... Tony Winner, Beth Level is here, who is really known as my friend who loves theater work swag. <laughs> oh, I literally I have your pants on, which sounds inappropriate. <laughs> you have the sweats on. Yay. <laughs> well, thank you for saving this. Adam. Hi, pal. Okay, Christiane. Yeah, Christiane just... No Follies. Go. Well, hang on. I'm going to go and watch this like a, a groupie that I am. But I just have to say that Christiane was, Follies was one of the most amazing productions I have ever seen. And Sally and Buddy were awesome. The whole cast, everything, the set, the costumes, it was magic, magic, magic. Well, Beth, Such a fan of Christine. So thank I, you for yeah. saying that. And you're, a, you're right. She and Adam together were amazing. They're, you know, they're my muses and you are as well. So thank we're put, you're coming on sometime soon to talk about some of our dances. So I can't wait. thank I you for getting me, Adam. I, I wish I could sing like Christiane Noel. Uh, <laughs> I'm such a fan. Anyway, mwah, Lisa Goldberg, my friend's going, ah, I, <laughs> Lisa, I don't know what I'm doing with any of this technology. I just show up and hope magic happens in the world of this. Thank you, Beth. Okay, bye. bye. For some reason, I'm now on Beth's phone. Oh, which I don't Beth, know what Beth happened. Level has gone live, and and now she's going to be leaving the room. Doesn't make sense to well, me at all. Okay, we'll just sit there. Well, but just quickly before you go, I got to get back to Christiane anyway. Yes. But I got to see you, Adam. 
talk about, just tell us something about what it was like to be on stage with Christiane, because I know what it's like to direct her, but not to be beside her. To be beside Christiane in the middle of a show, in the middle of a story, is to, be, is to face what I like to think of as honest eyes. Mm -hmm. you, will, you will always be told truth. It is never uh, in any way, that never feels artificial. It is always fully lived and fully realized. And we had never worked together before. And, uh, and yet I sort of feel like we made an immediate connection because I, I think we do the same kind of work. You, you do, know? you do. So it was, you know, very gratifying because you never know. And when you're, when you're fixed up, like a uh, director will fix a couple up uh, and you're made a match, you hope for the best. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, we lucked out and uh, I, uh, you know, adored every moment of it. It is, it was a stunning production. She, I mean, to describe losing my mind is mm -hmm. kind of impossible. And I, I wish that, that there were a clip out there uh, that, that, so that others could understand what kind of fusion that was between her and, and Sondheim's music. Uh, well, I I wish I could have you both on together, but I'll find a way. And I love you both. I love you, Adam Heller. I'm getting rid of you so I can get her back. And you'll come on too. We have lots to talk about. Ciao. Bye. Love you, Christian. Okay, let's see if I, here she is. Now this should work. Oh my God, Christian, I'm gonna be drinking. You're gonna be talking. Here she comes back on. Oh. All right. Did you hear that? Did yes. you hear those two people oh talk about you in that way? Oh, oh my God. Beth does. Beth is one of the best uh, backstage after the show people that I have ever uh, encountered. She is, I mean, as gifted and brilliant as she is on stage and everything she does, when she comes to see a show, I have never met anyone that is more generous and more. Um, delightful backstage, like and just knows how to do it. And Adam, I did feel a kinship with him. My gosh, you both yes, work thank exactly you. What a sweet thing to say. The same way. I mean, I can't think of a better stage couple. And isn't it awesome that they're a couple? It's yes. So crazy. Yes, it's perfect. It's they, perfect. Amazing people. Before we get to next to normal, because I know people tuned in to hear a little bit about that, but I yeah. have to talk about mother in ragtime because yeah. I have this opportunity and I actually been so how did you get the role of mother quickly because I want to get to some more meat but how did you get I, mother? I was um I was doing a, a show down in DC and all of the local actors were I was at the signature theater and they were all the local actors were talking about the next season coming up at the Kennedy Center was was ragtime and I went in my brain oh well that's my show I'm doing that which I've never ever done. Um, and I was pregnant at the time. <laughs> and by the time- Did you tell them that? Oh, they couldn't avoid it because I was, I think I was seven months pregnant when I went in, maybe eight, something ridiculous. I was, I was big and they panicked when I got down on my hands and knees to do the garden scene, dig the baby out or whatever, you know, cause I was, yeah, with child. So a uh, sort of an unfair advantage really. <laughs> to, <laughs> to do that but it they were my my representation was the second people that we called as soon as as soon as i gave birth because i ended up starting rehearsals i think five five and a half six weeks after i gave birth yes. which I is mean, i do not recommend at all but it was it was a brilliant way to do it because i was so fixated on that little thing when i wasn't in the rehearsal room that I couldn't get in my head about anything. And your first child, you know, your only first, child. My first Rihanna, and only. But yeah. your first, but thought, people don't understand what actors do. I mean, <sighs> the passion to create that art, and you are an amazing mother. I'm gonna say this because you. you won't. You're an amazing, I've never, I know what, what love and, and dedication that you have to your daughter and the, and but in 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 the world of actors, you have to balance that, and you can't let something like that go by. And you made the right choice yeah. <laughs> because yeah. it got you a Tony nominee. It so the was... next question is: Okay, this is a. What did it feel like to 
get that call? Like, Christina, who called you? Did you watch it on TV? Like, how did you find out? Um, I was actually, I had to fly to London. I was doing a project <laughs> with Julie Andrews and I was on my way to the airport. So I was packing. And uh, we knew that the uh, nominations were coming out that morning and I was putting stuff in a bag and all of a sudden my phone just started blipping like crazy. And I just kind of collapsed in a big heap of, I have to be honest, re relief because there, that was, it was supposed to be a small short run down at the Kennedy Center. We weren't supposed to move. It, it, I, you release all kinds of expectations of, of anything in terms of all of those kinds of accolades. I mean, we all kind of think, oh, you know, practicing your, your acceptance speeches and all, you know, all that stuff as we're coming up as young performers. And then you get a chance to, you know, to do something like that. And you think, oh, wouldn't this be nice? But we got to be on Broadway. That was a huge Huge thing that we were not. It's a beautiful production. We Marcia weren't expecting. Milgram Dodge. It was yep. stunning. It was beautiful, and we were just so thrilled. I mean, I was. We were all so thrilled to have anybody see it for more than just the three weeks we were supposed to be down at the Kennedy Center. So, and then we closed, which happens. Uh, you know, live theater is difficult. We understand, um, and so when the, you know award season comes around, and you kind of go. Well, it was really good work, but we're closed. You know, if we were still running, maybe something different would happen, you know, and, and you just sort of let all that go. But, you know, I, I mean, I knew at the time it was one of the best things I had done in terms of, of the work that I had done. And the, the production was so beautiful. And to be remembered that way and honored that way was so uh, just uh, unexpectedly wonderful. Like just the, the sprinkles on top of the Sunday of that entire thing. Jump to Tony Knight. Yeah. What like what did you wear? What was it like? Who, oh God, I wore some bring? purple thing. I brought my husband, and Wait, we ended up having purple? A, purple. It was plum. It was plum. Next to normal Next, colors. There it is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was. Uh, oh, I can't even remember who the cat ca, ca, Cavelli. Cavelli. Is that the name of a designer? I don't remember. I should oh, know these things. Dress. Oh, but listen, so people who don't know, like, so you're in the audience, Tony nominee, Christiane No, and then you had to do a number from the show. For people who don't know, I actually think they would love to hear this. What happens when we see you in the red carpet? We see you in the audience. Oh, you're getting a lot of wonderful comments about ragtime and people seeing you in oh. DC. Um, um, they, uh, what happens, like, how do you, how do we see you, like, all done up in the audience, and then there you are in your costume doing the number? Well, the gentleman that helped me do my, my hair and makeup, I had, I told him, I said, now this all, whatever it is you're doing, has to get squished and stuck under a wig. <coughs> and we had timed it all out, and he sort of figured all of that out, And because we're sitting there, and my husband and I decided it was just a big party, because that was the year of Green Day. So they were supposed to sit in front of us. I don't know that they ever actually showed, <laughs> showed up, but, but it was, I don't. But um, as soon as it started and American Idiot started and all that stuff was going on, we, my husband and I were just like, ah! I mean, because I thought, we're well, here we are, we're in Radio City. It's a big party. There was no expectation. We just were just so excited just to be there and decided to just sort of let any kind of nerves just not, not, be, exist. So then, but then they come and they get you and they shuttle you up to the dressing rooms and then you shove the hair in everything and then you get into the thing and then they bring you back down and, and kind of shuttle you around the audience. Wow. And, you know, as I'm walking by and I laughed because I was like, oh, the, hi, Daniel Radcliffe, you're sitting right there. Hello. <laughs> you know, you're just. Little and they have someone that sits in your seat, right? Uh, so if the camera yes, they have around. someone who's sitting in the seat, and uh, I'm getting some glare. Oh well, sunset in in Jersey. Here we are. Oh well, that's okay. Uh, um, so yeah, then then you just sit there and try to breathe, uh, eternally breathing. And because I, we've all watched the Tonys and seen some brilliant performances, and then seen some performances where people get a little bit hyper and excited and overwrought. And I was just like, just don't, 
just don't freak out. Just don't freak out. Just breathe. Just calm. And I, you know, when I watch it, I'm like, I guess that was good. God, I feel like I was comatose. No, because I was sitting there just going, just just be calm. Just be calm. Just be calm. (laughs) But it was, I was so thrilled to, to, oh God. You know what? I have to be honest. Oh, there's your, you're getting your son. Yeah. I'm trying to find I have to be honest that when I was thinking about Sally's and we, you know, I had met you that I watched I watched the tape of you doing back to before on the Tonys, and I I, I just completely fell in love with you. Aw, thank you. Um, be just because I could talk to you for an hour, and we had to get to the game. But yes, okay. We have to talk about. No, we have yes! to. This although, is the reason we're here. Although, for those people who want like a lot more and want to hear from everyone tomorrow, seven o'clock. Yes. Next to normal cast reunion. It's going to be on Facebook Live Zoom. You just check out our website if you if you want uh, more information. But I'm so excited because, you know, I, I won't lie. We talk as a family like like not like it's not like I haven't seen anybody. <laughs> no, we had our Zoom chat and we and like, and like you said earlier, we still have a text thread, you know, yes. and, and anytime someone has a birthday, we're doing that or if someone shows up and does something, oh, congratulations, yay, you know. So yeah, we do birthday text. So we're gonna yeah. see everybody. We're gonna get a catch up from everybody. Um, so that's a good opportunity for you to say something about Dear Evan Hansen, kind of why. I was not talking about it too much because we have tomorrow night. When I say, what are okay. you doing? We wouldn't, those of you have to come back on and watch it. Next to Normal was wonderful. Christiane wasn't too shabby either. I love well, that. thank you. <laughs> well, you are a award winner for that role. Multiple awards, which we'll also talk about tomorrow. Yeah. But, but I remember I called you up and asked you to breakfast. You no, know, this was funny though. So you tell the story. Yeah, because, so you call me up and you say, I'm thinking of doing next to normal um, next season. I'm like, oh, but it, the way you did it, you were, it sounded like you were using me as a sounding board and we had had <laughs> enough times that we had had chit chats and stuff. So that didn't seem out of place for you to call me up and. Say, so what do you, what do you think of that show? What do you, you know? And so we're, I was like, great. And I got off the phone. I'm like, I think he may have asked me to do next to normal for him, but I'm not sure. <laughs> so, so me. So thankfully you finally were, you, well, you I know, said, said well, I think, breakfast. I think you're my Diana. Fine. Yes. You, yeah, you came out like, for breakfast. Are you interested? Well, honestly, yes! you know, <laughs> yeah, but you know, I always forget, although I'm so proud of my theater, my staff oh. here, and the work that we do. But, you know, it's like Broadway, big regional theater. And, you know, it was for us to do Next to Normal was a big leap. It was a lot of people. And I remember saying, I'm not apologizing, but, you know, we're a 200-seat theater in Hartford. We will treat you like gold, which I hope we which did. Which you totally and did. I did get you an award. Well, you got yourself an award, but we we got yeah, each other got... some awards. <laughs> Thank you. And um, but uh, I knew from working with you as Sally, I was like, oh my God, she has the strength and the vulnerability. And I, honest to God, I don't know if I ever told you this, but I never heard you sing rock. So I knew that you wouldn't. I knew that you wouldn't take on anything you felt you couldn't do. I did know that. But when we have breakfast, besides, you know, will you do this? We'll treat you great. I just wanted to talk to you about because I've only knew you. I've only known you at that point. Only knew you at that point as a legit, right. glorious, legit soprano. And um, I knew though, but from knowing you from that, that you wouldn't. Um, that you wouldn't say yes to something you couldn't do. And one of the things I admire most, uh, again, I don't want to use all my cards for tomorrow, but that score, you, were, you lived like a nun or whatever. You would finish the show. You literally would not speak until the next show. And I remember the day that you said, I'm going to try and navigate the show because I have to get through 40-something performances. And we mm-hmm. added a couple at the end. You were like, you, I'm going to navigate it. And you like, so I think, could you tell that I was navigating? And I was like, 
I couldn't tell you were navigating it, because that, you're that, that was, good. Oh God! Well, but that's that's the, that's the thing that a lot of young young actors, of old actors too. Good Lord! I just learned that lesson. Um, you, if you're not giving 110 percent, you feel like you're cheating everybody. But you, can, if it's if it's a performance you can't sustain, then it's not a performance worth doing because then it's not an honest performance. It's all about the vocal pyrotechnics. So I, for me anyway, so I really wanted to be able to sustain a certain thing. And so I, I, I've, I've had to really calibrate where can I pull back? And in pulling back, what am I now learning? Why is she pulling back? What new colors did that bring to who this person is? And it opened up a whole world of options and things to play with, which I was really grateful once you guys gave me permission to say, no, 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 it's great. That's good. You Keep know, doing that. We're talking about Adam Souza, the amazing Adam Souza. Oh, I hope you're watching who just or will watch. held me the entire time. Who is, he was now the resident music director at Goodspeed, so Yay! I get to see him a lot. And he just bought a house. Oh. But um, he his... He, I think he's the only person that match, that would match our both of our obsessive passions to get it, things right. It was, he was, it was, it was so, oh my, th th that was, that was, I would say one of the most incredible theatrical experiences I've ever had. Wow. Well, I, 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 it's on I, my, it's apps, you know how I feel about it. Yeah. But I'm going to do that. You can't answer this question. So you all have to tune in tomorrow night if you want to hear the answer. Okay. But there was a moment when you said, I figured it out. Because, you know, how do I get through this story and leave my family? And you, you said, I think I figured it out. Tomorrow night, tune in and you'll get the answer. Because it really shows the brilliance of you uh, in your mind and um, how some collaboration like this can define a production. Drum roll. Drum but I'm going to do something really quick before we go to the game. And then yes. don't go away because we'll wrap up. But okay. um, my, my best Christian Knoll inside scoop is oh God. sometimes at rehearsal, <laughs> I am. in the middle of a scene, Christian goes, no, 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 it's not right. No. I'm and awful. For it's a, a co-star or a director, it's a little disconcerting at first. Oh, I would guess. But I know now, and I told the cast of Next to Normal, in particular David Harris, who's listening there. I'm like your husband. I'm like, just, just if wait, Christian just wait. does this, it's really about her own, like her own inner lens. Stop. You want to say something about it? <laughs> it's it's about stop the madness. And I, I was going in a direction, and now you've said something else. So, nope, 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 okay, okay. It's not, nope, that's a bad idea. It is, nope, stop where you're going, go a different way. And I have to actually say it out. I don't realize I'm you. saying it out loud. It's totally yeah. for me. I am, I, I, and I, it's, I'm a brat. It's awful and probably really terrible. Well, it's tomorrow what? night when David is here. I do it to my family too, <laughs> they just said. When I do David it all the is time. here, when David is here, um, it's uh, awful. I'm tomorrow, I'm gonna, because I actually side talked to him before and it worked out great. He didn't take it personally. Um, I missed the mountains. I'm so glad you did that. Oh my God. I missed the mountains. We're gonna bring your family on. My favorite yes. song, you know, it actually gave me my way in. I missed the mountains. You were so generous to give of your time, as were all those amazing musicians oh. and Adam. I was the thrilled to meet them all before that we, we started. That when we're gonna show it tomorrow too. But okay. when we realized that that studio recording was the fourth day of rehearsal, yeah. it was actually the day off. Yeah. We had three music rehearsals, and then you went into the studio and read that recording, which I showed the other night on the conversation with Tom Kitt. And first of all, for any other artist that's watching, thank you, because it wouldn't have happened unless you said, let's do it. Oh, Thanks to Tom Kitt thank for, you. Remember, for saying, let us do the yeah. whole song. Yeah. Adam and the musicians, like it established a tone. And so this, 
song is going to weave into our game tonight. So can you bring on your amazing yes. family? Yes, I'm going to take my headset out so them. they can hear me. Okay. Okay. Can you still hear me? Chrissy Ann's family. Yay. Okay, here they Jamie, come. Jamie, so Brianna. Here's, come on here's in. Have, come on in. So we have, there's Rihanna. And there's, there's Jamie. Jamie. How oh, cute. Oh, so handsome with the beard. Yeah, I, right? I trimmed for only the second time in uh, quarantine for you. Rihanna, get close to mom on her side so I can see you. Oh, you're so beautiful. OK, for those look who are watching, she's like, she's is like, she not the this. perfect? She's a mix. Yeah, it's amazing. And Rihanna sang with you where? Town Hall. Yeah. Town Hall. Maya, because I know none of them are listening. I'm sorry, Rihanna, who I just gave it away. Who was your favorite and next to normal? <laughs> ah, oh, Maya. <laughs> who was your favorite? <laughs> they were buddies. They, they were, buddies. were buddies. Maya loved and, you too. And she did um, a production of a Christmas Carol with him up in Rochester. So she when said, I was eight. You were eight. Eight. Celeste just said, Oh my God, she's gotten so big. So the, yes. the cellist was like, Rihanna. She's almost, she's almost um, five feet tall. And your theater was so gracious and embracing of everybody. Oh, tell everybody what we did. Oh, oh, what didn't you do? She, Adam <laughs> said, here, here's a headset and let her sit in the pit. And so she sat with the musicians for a whole show. Then, well, for the first act. sorry, for the first. Okay, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna say it wrong, and you can fix it. And then she uh, we gave her another headset, and she um, was with CC back on the deck, and um, handed off, like helped do quick, you know, pass offs of things. We're and family she, friendly at Theater Works. Oh, so embracing, and like I oh, you know, to, Celeste said, and then she and then fell she asleep. sat in the booth. <laughs> But oh, Celeste says she fell asleep at one point. Yes, and she fell asleep. She was tired. <laughs> she put her head back and fell asleep. <laughs> but but she, she just said her favorite part of, of all of the things was getting to sit up in the booth. Um, okay. And, and, and call. She, she Your girlfriend, up. Maya, says it was so fun. Maya, we love you. Tomorrow Yay. night. Bye. All right. The first question, this is, yes. a, this is a new test. We're going to play this game called <laughs> The Mountain's Range. And this, I am going to give you two song titles with the word mountain in it. Okay. One of them is real and one of them is fake. Ain't no mountain high enough. The first, <laughs> well, I'm going to have to change. The first ah! one was for Rihanna. That was easy. Sorry. But I have a backup easy one. Okay. So Rihanna, you get to answer this because we got to warm up. Which one of these titles is real? Which one is fake? Okay. I have a mountain of love for you is number one or Rocky Mountain High. Oh, you should have asked him. Well, he knows, I know it. I've he's got the been, but he's been, he's All right. been playing it. Do you have it. any thoughts? I have a mountain of love for you or Rocky Mountain High, which I changed in the moment. No? Make a guess. She's louder. Rocky Mountain High? Yes! All right. OK, here's a family question. Now they're going to get hard. OK. Oh, boy. Number one is, I am the mountain, you are the valley. And number two is, Misty Mountain Hop. You can all answer individually. I, I, the, the first one sounds like a hymn or something. Yeah. So you're choosing I am the mountain, you are the valley. Yeah. Jamie? Uh, I'm going to say Misty Mountain Hop. Misty Mountain Hop. Rihanna? I'm going with Misty Mo Mountain Hop too. The real song is Misty Mountain yeah. Hop. Yeah. <laughs> it was actually a, a Led Zeppelin song, uh, and they released it in their fourth album in 1971. Oh, I'm sorry. I yeah. That's OK. Here's, num <laughs> here's the next one. Yes. I can't move no mountains is number one, or, or the Green Mountain State is blue without you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love that you laughed. I don't know any of these. I um, can't move no mountains. 
or the Green Mountain State is blue without you? I'm gonna do the first one. I can't move no mountains. No, After you're picking, I'm going with the second one. You're gonna choose the Green Mountain State is blue without you, Rihanna. I'm going with the first one. The first one is right. I Ooh, can't move I no it. mountains. It's a 1975 funk soul classic by Margie Joseph, also sung by Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Awesome. And Rihanna asked your parents about that afterwards. Who yes. they are. <laughs> we'll All play. right, last one. Yes. White Mountain Home, Wolverton Mountain. White Mountain Home or Wolverton Mountain? White Mountain Home. White Mountain Home. White Mountain Home. It's a clean sweep. You're all wrong. <laughs> 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 Wolverton Mountain is the real song. It's a hit that established Claude King's career as an American country songwriter in 1962. I'm That's excited. right. Yes! <laughs> that. All right, before you all go, thank you for being the amazing family you are. Aww. Rihanna, I so, I'm so happy to know you. I've gotten to work with your mom and your dad, but I hope one day I get to work with you because um, I've seen your work on tape. Um, it is, uh, it's an it's a, you guys are, are like, you know, I don't know what you call you, but you're like a theater family. <laughs> uh, like, um, uh, uh, what is it? Night music. Oh, yes. Yes, that's a show you could all do together. So, uh, and, okay, a little night music. Please, somebody produce this because it's big for, it's not a theater work show, but no. it's my, on my bucket list. Yeah. Harford Stage, if you're watching. Can I, can I get you all to agree right now? Yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, thank you guys for coming on. But Christiane, before you go, before yeah. we go, because, yeah. you know, I'm going to go on with the designers tonight. You guys can stick around. It's fine. Oh, I just um, need to rest my But you heart. seem to have a theme <laughs> about mothers. I do. What is, is that just by chance or? I found my calling, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but I do have to ask one more thing, because I do think that's true. But you, when you sang for me, for my 25th anniversary at TheaterWorks. And because of that concert, you discovered something that became a cabaret show that you did in San Francisco. Can you tell uh, that story before we go? Um, well, it, you asked me to, to sing for your anniversary, which I was thrilled to do. And so we, and so we, <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, I said, well, what do you, it's, your, it's your evening, so what do you want? And it became sort of a show of uh, song, either shows that Rob would like to direct me in or songs that Rob wants me to sing. And so we, that was kind of what we named it. Don't pass over the one song that I want to direct you in, which is Bridges. Oh, oh Bridges, yes. Bridges of Madison. Madison County. Bridges of yes. Madison County. Anyone Coming to interested? a theater near you She's amazing. after all this mess is done. Yes. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, we, we, we went with that and, um, it, it turned into such a beautiful program and we had, we used some of the musicians for the show get, you know, also joined us. And so we had, uh, uh, the cello and we had guitar and French horn and piano and it turned into this amazing. Billy thing. Bavona, Billy Bavona, the guitarist Billy. for Next to Normal played guitar. And French, French horn, horn. <laughs> with cello, with Celeste, and that oh, it was just Celeste played cello. You and William Waldrop. You got William Waldrop to play, and then so then when I was uh, touring with Dear Evan Hansen, these uh, while we were in San Francisco, they asked me um, out there to do Feinstein's room, and so I was like, oh gosh, I don't even know what show I should I do, and then I went, wait a minute, we should actually turn you said we should make it bigger. And I was like, well, let's do it for this. So we've been working on making it bigger. So I'm hoping that that actually is my next thing. But the common thing you said to me was, Rob, I realize is a common theme. These are all songs about unhinged women. Unhinged women. <laughs> but you said, I don't know if we should use that title. So tell them what title you ended up with. 
Oh God, you have to say it because I don't remember. Am I losing my mind? Oh, am mind? I losing my mind? Right. <laughs> there. Yes. Apparently I am. Yes. Christian, um, no. I you're like mostly my dear friend and I, I lean on you a lot and you know that but you're an amazing artist you're an amazing person and I couldn't be I'm gonna I didn't only drink part of my glass I couldn't be more grateful for you in my life your amuse and your work in next to normal because and follies but I'm gonna speak about theater works your work in next to normal was was something I, I don't think I've ever experienced um, in our in in our theater in a musical and so sorry if if that does something but it was very special and we know what that means right in the business it's special oh it, it, yes it, you moment. lived it and I know that it cost you something and but I also know that you love it as much as I do so very much so yeah I I uh, your your carrot of we will teach treat you like gold I've never experienced uh, a theater. Uh, environment like the one that I experienced in your theater, a theater works in Hartford. Um, every single person from the people that are cleaning up the programs in the theater afterward to the ones that are greeting you when you come in to every single person in the office to the people that are helping in the rehearsal room or who are running the show, every, every single person feels valued and you can tell and they all share a unified vision of what you guys are trying to do. And because they feel valued, we, they share that feeling with each artist that comes in there. It, you made it so easy to do my job. I, I, all of you, it, I, I adore every last soul that you bring into that organization. And I, I think, um... happily, come back anytime oh you will come back it's your choice right now <laughs> um i i have to say thank you for saying that and we're working so hard and some people are furloughed and they're coming back we're all going to be back by the end of june and i thank my lucky stars every day and they put up with a lot um because i'm you know of my energy and my passion <laughs> Oh, thanks, you guys. Stay on target. Um, well, listen, you know, there's a whole campaign now to do a live next to normal um, concert when when we're back. You know, like, oh. I think it would be so amazing to get the band, to get the cast, and, yeah. you know, in the spring, whenever, to do a, oh. to do a next to normal co concert yes. at music stands would be, like, amazing. Amazing. But I'm not putting you on the spot. No, but no, no. But my staff is, like the best yes, and they, they make me look good every single day and 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 i have an amazing board of people who also support my crazy whims and uh but, but mostly hired... i have a brand new dressing room with your name on it <laughs> you hire the best people and then you let them do their jobs and they yes. know that and and they do them brilliantly and i just it's invaluable so, jerry lupacino my best friend one of my best friends and our was our board president during uh during the renovation uh, uh, said uh like celebrate a new normal and that's what we have to do and thank you for coming on tonight i love you i i love you and i actually can say I'll see you tomorrow, tomorrow. night at seven o'clock. Tomorrow yes. at seven for seven? the <laughs> seven, not seven, seven thirty, because I I wanted to give us like some time, uh, and uh, for the next to normal um, cast reunion, and it should be the cast, and I hope Adam Souza, our music director, will be there. Yeah, He's I'm my sorry friend. Sorry, didn't and... get to chat with him tonight. Yeah, well, get him tomorrow. Tomorrow, and. Um, Thank you all for coming. Uh, I'm going to go eat this bologna sandwich. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, everyone. Stay safe. Bye. Wear your masks. Yes. Wear your masks. Wear your masks. It's the, it's the one thing you can do to keep this under control. Love you all. Love you, Christiane. Love Talk you. Talk soon. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye, Rob.